Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight I'm going to show you my workflow uh, for the object that I recently captured known as the Cave Nebula. Uh, this is also from the Shapeless catalog SH2-155. Now for me this is a, a revisit of the Cave Nebula. I had shot it uh, a couple years ago and I actually have that right here and so with this shot I use a 70 millimeter refractor the SV70T at focal length of 336 this is with an ASI 533 MC camera and uh, it was actually the very first time I used the L Extreme filter and so these are the results that I got I believe it's 17 hours worth worth of exposure uh, but you know, to be honest, I wasn't overly enthused about this shot. And uh, doing some research, it turns out that this target is a, a really good candidate for broadband uh, if, uh, if the um, sky conditions permit. And so um, a couple weeks ago, we had a, a fortunate string of clear nights, uh, nearly two weeks worth of clear nights with the new moon right in the middle of that so lots of clear starless nights and when I get a good stretch uh, without the moon I do like the focus on broadband it's it's I can get narrow band anytime uh, but without that moon out there it's like an opportunity to get a broadband target and I thought uh, that uh, this was a good time to go back and, and work on the cave only this time instead of pointing a refractor I would use my 8 inch edge and let's take a look at that data. So here's the um, here's our luminance. A lot closer. We, we're literally getting just just this cave here. Uh, you can see it doesn't hold up too well at this uh, smaller focal length. But now we're getting it nice and close. Uh, so anyway, there's uh, luminance and there's our red. and green and blue and so I do my usual this was a very straightforward uh, processing I do my usual uh, I had to register them all because I um, stack them separately and then run dynamic background extraction against them and so here you can see the, again right there I did do a combination of RGB and then pulled the RGB stars out so I've been making a habit of on these uh, on these uh, mono LRGB images is grabbing the RGB stars alone and then you know since uh, uh, using star exterminator and removing the stars is part of my regular workflow now when it comes time to add stars back I do the RGB only stars not the LRGB stars And uh, this is what the RGB alone looked like, right? And not stretched. This is just auto stretch. So that's uh, the result that I got with um, uh, with taking those RGB stars. You'll notice that there's problems here. Uh, I've got something on the front of the scope, and you can see it here on both both sides. I think you know what? No, it can't be on the front of the scope. It's got to be one of the lens, uh, one of the filters because the uh, Luminance didn't have these, but um, I take care of these in processing. I mean, again, this is the consequence of taking uh, lots of shots across multiple nights, and I'm not running flats every single night. And so what ends up happening is that as stuff accumulates night after night, my flats are less effective. Now, Here's the luminance. Uh, so in addition to DBE, I also run dynamic background extraction uh, on the luminance channel, and we can actually see the effects. Now, of course, it's having a nice impact on the stars, but I'm not using these luminance stars. But I still run it to uh, improve the, um, uh, the resolution, really, in, in some of this dust. And so there, I mean, it's very noticeable with the stars. But like, even if you kind of look, if you focus on this area right here, hopefully it shows up in YouTube. And now there, that's with deconvolution. So it's a little bit better contrast, a little bit 
more detail and it's all being done at the uh, at the uh, linear level and now the next thing I do to prep the the RGB data for um, adding the um, luminance channels I stretch it first uh, and then I blur it out and for blurring I just used MMT and you just disable these layers right you just drag that on your image and it it blurs it just like that uh, and the reason we're doing that is it it for one thing it all your details in the luminance and it takes care of any kind of chromatic noise any color noise all right and then the luminance gets stretched and added and this is what I ended up with all right and so now we're gonna step through uh, most of the processing that I did on this image so there we go we remove the stars now this is kind of a weird thing I'm using star exterminator right and it's left behind some artifacts uh, on the stars now it's not a problem is getting getting them back in because I've saved the RGB stars uh, there was another update to star exterminator pretty quickly after this update came out so I don't know uh, the I processed a couple images since processing this and I didn't run into this so I'm not sure exactly what happened here uh, but at the time because I knew the stars that I was using the RGB stars were good I just used clone stamp to uh, delete these and so there you can see using clone stamp and I took them all out except for this guy here and then after that I just went to my usual uh, curves work you can see we got a mask on here so I'm wanting to bring out the background notice that we've got these two artifacts right it's one artifact and it's on both sides thanks to the uh, Viridian flip uh, but you'll see that I take care of those um, and I left this here I didn't want to use clone stamp in the center because I didn't want to uh, mess with the actual dusty details that are in here so I figured getting the uh, the star is so bright that getting the RGB stars added on should have should correct for that anyway alright so keep moving ahead yep mostly just curves work see we got a mask on there yep so working on the background some more there you can see I'm now starting to do some work on that one right there this was a mask uh, that I created using the game script I mean it's not it's not perfect but I figured with enough of the dust around here and then getting the stars back in there it's not going to be too noticeable uh, I was a little lazy in in dealing with this uh, and then you know the make it for over here because it was a mer meridian flip I just had to uh, uh, flip the copy the mask and flipped it and then I had another one that fit over there there we go working on curves again in the actual cave things got real purpley here uh, and so you'll see yep there it is so I inverted uh, and I subtracted a little bit of green just to get that purple out more inverting yeah I mean like I said, this is a pretty straightforward process. So this is kind of where I ended up with. Okay, so I just switched to a different workspace. Um, and I did the final work on here. So here's our finished starless image. Uh, here are the stars, these original RGB stars. So you can see they're not, they're not stretched here. And I'll just show you the steps that I made. And I all I did is I just stretched them a little bit. And... Um, I didn't think I even had to tweak the colors too bad on this. I probably could have done more work on the stars, but I thought they were fine. And then this is the formula over here that I'm using to uh, put the stars together. And I mean, I get this from Star Exterminator, right? So if you go to Star Exterminator, and uh, you just kind of hover over the unscreened stars it, it explains the process and 
uh, gives you that formula. And that, that formula, this unscreen and screen and putting them back uh, works great. And um, so that was the result here. And as a final step, I applied Star Exterminator. You can see the values that I used. And there. So nice, smooth, clean, close-up image of the cave nebula. So yeah, it's kind of cool to see this up close and in uh, broadband. Uh, usually you see it in narrowband. And uh, maybe I'll revisit this target and do narrowband one day. But I was really in the mood to shoot some RGB. So I'd love to uh, hear what you guys think. Comments are always welcome. Uh, I do respond to every single comment that's put on there. So if you got any questions or suggestions, certainly feel free to drop them in there. Um, if you like this uh, video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Um, I try to do one of these workflow videos for almost every target uh, that I image. There's been a couple that have slipped through. Uh, but then in addition to these, I have full-blown tutorials. I have a PixInsight beginner video. I've got a, a PixInsight deconvolution video. And of course, there's equipment uh, reviews in there too. I recently reviewed my uh, Celestron Edge 8, the scope that I use to take this picture. And I've got a lot of stuff in mind. So with that said, clear skies everyone, and good evening.